thank you for inviting me to join you to celebrate the fifth anniversary of the Luxembourg Green Exchange, LGX. A hearty congratulations to Julie Becker, the CEO of the Luxembourg Stock Exchange and her colleagues. I remember fondly that as the treasurer of the World Bank in 2017, I participated in that year's Luxembourg Stock Market Day alongside Minister Pierre Gramena and other participants who are equally passionate about the role of capital markets in society. I was particularly pleased that Luxembourg as a country and the Luxembourg Stock Exchange were already pioneering green and sustainable finance. You've made impressive strides in only five years. You're an important destination today for green finance issuance by multilateral development banks, sovereigns, corporates, and banks from advanced economies and emerging and developing economies alike. You have various partnerships with exchanges around the world and have supported many entities and exchanges through your training academy. Green finance is vital to securing the future of our planet, especially given the huge challenges society faces today. These challenges include ensuring a sustainable post-pandemic recovery, eliminating poverty, eliminating inequalities, enabling social cohesion, and most importantly, addressing climate change issues. 10 million people are estimated to die every year from pollution. Weather-related disasters cost over $200 billion last year, which is up by 26.5% when compared to 2019. Conflict and security are being exacerbated by climate issues. Food systems are also in jeopardy. Pre-pandemic, the annual financing gap for the Sustainable Development Goals was estimated by UNCTAD to be at least $2.5 trillion for developing countries and at least $5 trillion globally. According to the Global Infrastructure Hub, the global infrastructure investment needs by 2040 are about $93 trillion, including a funding gap of $15 trillion. This means we have many opportunities to build climate resilient infrastructure that will further foster decarbonization. While global warming needs to be below 1.5 degrees centigrade, the United Nations framework on climate change estimates that based on the nationally determined contributions submitted by parties to the Paris Agreement, that the world is, in their own words, on a catastrophic pathway to 2.7 degrees centigrade. Last year, it was estimated that while clean energy sources and renewables are attracting about $300 billion of funding annually, society would need $2.5 trillion to realize the ambition of keeping global warming to below 1.5 degrees centigrade. Financing is therefore key for the transition to clean energy and a decarbonized world. Addressing these challenges will require huge public resources and private sector capital. Public sector does not have the capacity to fund these huge requirements alone. Indeed, what would make sense is that resources from governments, bilaterals and multilaterals, act as risk capital that will catalyze private sector capital. Leveraging innovative finance domestically and globally will also be useful. Stock exchanges are therefore and play, therefore play an important role because they're visible, they're transparent venues and platforms that enable diversification of funding sources. They also give confidence to retail and institutional investors alike and facilitate monitoring of whatever is being financed. 
It is therefore crucial that you continue to pioneer green finance, given the importance of these huge financing requirements and the urgency with which we need to address them. Also important is that green finance has unique attributes that make it more responsive to the challenges of today. These include responsiveness to investor demand, transparency, in-depth screening processes, and monitoring second-party opinion, third-party verification, and of course, there are periodic input reports associated with green finance. Since the global green bond markets make up less than 1% of bond issuance, what I desire to see is that these green finance rigorous standards one day can be applied to all types of bonds and particularly conventional bonds. Why do I say this? It is because green finance unique attributes enable a holistic approach. For example, aligning the climate agenda and the socio-economic development agenda, thereby fostering social co-benefits such as creating jobs. Indeed, green has a social purpose as the beneficiaries of less pollution less extreme weather events and other benefits are of course people and planet. Green finance also enables engagement and education of the public through retail investors. Stock exchanges are uniquely posi positioned to facilitate such education and such engagement. It is such a laudable initiative to have to have a dedicated green finance exchange. You have laid a strong foundation in only five years. I have no doubt that you will play an even greater role going forward. A hearty congratulations. Thank you.